we journey into the Madagascar rainforest, coming face to face with lemurs, some of the most endangered primates on Earth. We're guided by a woman who has dedicated her life to preventing the extinction of these exotic and beautiful creatures. And against all odds, she's actually having an impact. Here's ABC's Alex Marquardt. This is one of the richest rainforests on Earth, Ranamafana, in the heart of the island of Madagascar home to an extraordinary range of animals, including tiny frogs. Is this full size? Yeah. yeah. The biggest chameleon on the planet. Watch out, watch out. Watch out. <laughs> and its most famous residents, the lemurs. We spent days in this muggy forest, trekking for miles, to catch a glimpse of this unique and endangered creature. And that's where I found it. They found one? Yeah. Furry blurs flying from branch to branch, hanging upside down, munching on leaves, or taking a snooze in the embrace of a tree. Madagascar is the only place on Earth where lemurs can be found in the wild. They're also some of the lesser known primates. But that's quickly changing, thanks to blockbuster movies like Madagascar. Welcome, giant pansies. And a recent starring role in the stunning new BBC series, Planet Earth 2. Obviously, they're adorable. What do you think the mass appeal of the lemur is? It has sort of that appeal of a panda bear, but it's not so big. It's fluffy like a cat. They have a kind of zen attitude about life, and they're very relaxed. Dr. Patricia Wright is an American primatologist at Stony Brook University and has dedicated her life to studying lemurs. Against all odds, she managed to convince the government of this island, where 90% of the land has been deforested, that it was worth protecting this rainforest and the lemurs in it. This is one of the poorest countries on the planet, and there you were, a foreigner, marching into these offices saying, stop chopping down the trees, which is the main source of income, in order to save this small animal. They must have looked at you and thought you were crazy. Indeed, and I try to explain to them that this animal is so special that people would come from all over the world to see it. And in our very first morning with her and the team of guides, an experience unlike any they've ever had. Trekking through the 160 square mile park, scanning the treetops looking for movement, we come across a cluster of three Shafaka lemurs nestled in a tree. This is amazing. There are three of them together a meter from us. We interrupted their post-lunch grooming session too close for comfort, apparently, as two scampered away. The third settling in for a nap. It's just so regal, crossing his arms and his legs like that, completely relaxed. In 30 years, Dr. Wright and the guides say this is the closest they've gotten to these lemurs in the wild. This is very, very rare. This is one of the hardest lemurs to found here. 15 of the more than 100 species of lemurs live here in this forest, many of them critically endangered including the black and white ruffed lemur, which hasn't been seen in months by the guides, but has just been spotted, launching an hours long pursuit. We are earning this lemur. Lots of very steep up and down, but we're heading to where the trees are that these black and white ruffed lemurs like to feed on and listening out for their distinctive call. Then, and around 60 feet off the ground, there they were, leaping, hanging by their tiny, powerful feet, scarfing down lunch. There are fewer than a thousand of these lemurs in the wild, and because of that call, that aggressive call, it makes them very easy for hunters to find them as well. One of the main reasons Dr. Wright chose to study lemurs is their social system. In these roving families, it's the females who are in charge. They decide where the whole group goes. They decide which fruit trees they're going to go in, and they go first, and they eat the best. These omnivores eat most anything, including bamboo stalks, which are full of cyanide, easily enough to kill a person, but no effect on the lemur. Dr. Wright's team is studying how they're able to digest such a powerful toxin. These golden bamboo lemurs like to hang out at the top of the canopy, and the guides can spot them pretty easily because when you're walking through the forest, you've got all the little bits that they don't want falling to the forest floor. At night, the littlest ones emerge. So we're cheating a little bit and rubbing some banana on the trees. Bananas are like crack to mouse lemurs. The mouse lemurs are the smallest primate in the world. How can you see anything? It's pitch black. You see it? Yeah. Oh yeah, there it is. Sure enough, going straight for the banana. Mouse lemurs are known to get the same disease as we do, like Alzheimer's, diabetes, and obesity, making them crucial to study. On this night, the researchers are setting traps for another small species, the dwarf lemur 
The team has been monitoring the health and size of the forest's population. After just a few hours, they catch one. This is a dwarf lemur. Measuring, tagging, and naming it. You just named it Alex? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me name for Alex. I'm honored. Hey, Alex. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> Look at those eyes. Even after three decades in this forest, Dr. Wright shows all the enthusiasm of a tourist visiting for the first time. The rainforest is an amazing place, and even though I've been here for 30 years, I still don't know exactly what's going to happen when I go out there. In protecting Ranima fauna, she's been able to bring back a number of lemur species from the brink of extinction. <laughs> Teaching a new generation of locals to treasure what they have and preserving the only place on Earth to study these special animals in their natural habitat. For Nightline, I'm Alex Marquardt in Ranima Fauna National Park in Madagascar.